Hi guys, XO Rider, hope you're doing well. Now I've got my hands on a uh, Royal Renfield Himalayan 450 today, so uh, this is my kind of first ride on it. I have got a longer term version coming over the next couple of months, but uh, this is my first impression of this uh, new bike, most anticipated bike, I think you could argue to say, in 2024. So I hope you enjoy it. Right, so first of all, let me start by saying a big thank you to CMS Motorcycles in Exeter, my local Royal Enfield dealer, very kindly lent me this for the day. So I really appreciate that. Um, I wanted to try it anyway for personal reasons. I'm really interested in the bike myself. So um, it's, it's brilliant to get out on it. I saw it about a month ago, just as a demo model, which wasn't rideable and I loved it. All right. I, I, I was never a big fan of the 411 looks wise. Uh, I think it did a job and I think it did that job really well, but I just couldn't, I couldn't get hold of it. You know, it just wasn't for me. This is the new engine. It's known as the Sherpa engine. It's a 451cc uh, engine there. Uh, 40 horsepower, 8,000 RPM. So it's one which you have to wind up a bit to get the max out of it. However, it does produce 90% of its torque, around 3,000 or 4,000 RPM. Torque settings are at 40 Newton meters at 5,500 RPM. So servicing hasn't changed, it's 3,000 miles or every six months. There is a difference on this engine because this engine hasn't got the adjustable tappets, it's shimmed, so you're gonna have to pack it out as and when. Um, from my experience in the past and from my knowledge, I believe that if you have a, a bike which is shimmed, then it, it doesn't need adjusting so much, so to speak. You know, quite often you'll go in there to check if it needs adjusting and it, it just doesn't. So I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Certainly if you're a self-servicer like me, um, I'm happy to do tappets. Would I do shims? Probably not. I'd probably need somebody to hold my hand a bit on that for the first time and show me how to do it. So um, obviously to keep the three year warranty, you will need to get that done by your local dealer. So that's quite important. And I would say, because it is a new engine, you would probably want to have that warranty, wouldn't you? Uh, just to make sure that everything's fine and there's no teething issues with the engine itself. Uh, show a suspension on the front and show it on the back as well, which I'm quite impressed with because uh, other bikes such as Hondas, for example, they'll put showers on the front, but then the back, they would just leave and, and make themselves uh, on some of their bikes. So. Um, Suspension on the bike is fantastic. It really is uh, lovely. Uh, perhaps a little bit uh, um, hard on, harder on the back. Um, you know, I, I quite I like soft suspension, but you know, it, it's set like that for a reason. It's it's a kind of do it all bike. Um, brilliant commuter, from what I can tell. I think this would be great if you had an, you know, only one bike. Then I think this 450 would be fantastic. And the reason for that is because. It's got the comfort level, it's got the fun factor now, which it kind of didn't have before. You couldn't race it around uh, too much, certainly the Euro 5 version. Um, you, you know, it wasn't so fun, whereas this does pick up really quickly. And certainly it's got a bit of top end as well, which is nice. Doesn't run out of puff, it just, it's geared nicely as well. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I mean, I've, I, you know, it's, like I say, it's the first ride I've ridden probably, I don't know, 10 miles, that's all I've done. And I've been smiling all the way. Um, before I go too far, I must apologize. Um, I don't know how to set my camera to stop the, the dashboard flickering. Uh, I saw it on Itchy Boots video, she had the same problem. So I've tried it at different frame rates, but it just isn't happening. So I do apologize if the screen does that. Exhaust there, little tiny exhaust, big catalytic converter underneath, quite prominent. Uh, me sat on the bike. <laughs> Uh, I'm five foot eight, 30 inch inside leg, and uh, that's how I sit there. I've got room to move around on the seat quite a lot, like so. So that's quite nice. Uh, we have a 17 litre tank, uh, which will, you know, I think it does about 3.6 litres, is what uh, Enfield state, uh, to 60 miles. So you won't be filling up too, too often with a 17 litre tank. Feels really nice. The handlebars are just right really really nice height there and i don't feel like i'm reaching at all and we've got the mud guard on the front there it's lacking a bit of a hugger on the back here but that's just the way they seem to make them these days come standard with a center stand so what we're going to do now we're going to go out 
and I'm going to test it on the motorway briefly. It's a brand new bike. It's going to vibrate. We've got to expect that, haven't we? Um, test it on the motorway and do a little bit in town and just get a general feel for it. Just do all I can in the time that I've got it. Off we go. So, very punchy engine now compared to the old agricultural long stroke 411. Uh, really lively, uh, low down revs if I chuck it in for sixth gear now, look. There's no judder, which is surprising. You would have thought it would judder like hell. Uh, six speed box, so I've got the gear indicator there. Uh, speedo, everything's nice and high up, perfectly situated there and uh, yeah, looks really nice and I've got all the information that I need to know. You can also uh, link this up with Google Maps as well and uh, that will give you your navigation there. So, sat on the bike, really, really comfortable. Uh, the seat may bug me after about an hour and a half maybe. Um, but you can move around on it, that's what I like about it. And at the rear of the uh, rider's seat, you, it's a lot wider, so you can kind of move around to the back and get comfortable again. For going around the corners on this bike, it's beautiful. You used to get quite a gyroscopic effect on the 411, whereas on, the, on this 450, it, you still feel that a little bit, but it's quite comfortable, it's quite nice. And it works really nicely, so uh, keeps itself up right nicely as well. Uh, stuck behind a lorry, typical. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go down here and we'll um, do a bit more testing. Uh, the foot peg position is nice. You have to pigeon toe a little bit in for the brake, but not as much as the 411. Uh, gear change is really slick, it's straight in. Uh, no problems finding neutral either. Um, uh, but to go around corners on this bike is the bit that um, is my take home at the moment. Uh, it's really, really pleasant to sort of swing around the, around the bends and the twisties and things like that. Just falls in quite nicely as well. You kind of feel quite high up on the bike. Uh, they've done a lot of work on the whole design of this bike, you can certainly tell that. And there's power all the way through the rev range as well. I think it's, uh, it creates 90% of its power between 3 and 4,000, something like that. And again, you could just leave it in a high gear and it would just pull you along. So it hasn't got the, the low speed tractability that the 411 had, because on the 411, you could go around a country lane, you could do a bit of laning, come up to a, 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 to a sticky situation. You could literally come to sort of five miles an hour and it would still chug through. A little less so on this one, but you can still go pretty slow, all things considered. But it's so lovely to turn into the corners. Absolutely nailed that. The Himalayan is mainly going to be riding the lanes isn't it? That's what a lot of people use them for. Certainly my mate Saddlebags. A couple other channels as well with uh, Himalayan 411s. Uh, if you want the Spanish version, or the French version, then it's uh, Economical Rides. He does a lot of lanes on Norman. Epic Adam. New biker. Mainly a road rider. Still waiting for him to get, give it a proper off-road uh, session on his Himalayan. <laughs> get there sometime. Uh, yeah, Old Wild and Free, have I said that one? He's done some great trips on his. But yeah, is it still a good lane explorer? Uh, 100%. Um, I wasn't expecting it to be, if I'm honest with you. I had some preconceived conceptions there, but it still actually works really nicely. Stood up on the pegs. 
Uh, I can grip the tank quite nicely, although it's the thinner section of the tank. I would, wouldn't mind a bit more purchase there, but again, essentially it, it's fine, there's no problem there. So yeah, you can still go exploring lanes, gateways with a view, go in search of them or old phone boxes if you're really bored. But it works. It works exactly the same as the old one. And uh, yeah, suspension again. Although it's firm on the back. Maybe I should play around with it a bit. It's probably set to standard settings maybe. Uh, it's still nice. It works for me. And look at that look. Even fourth gear, 26 mile an hour up a steep hill. And it still pulls. It's still got that Roy Wenfield low down chuck ability. Love it but just in a different format, it does feel different. Just feels, uh, just feels, uh, feels good. I like it a lot. loads of power there to overtake as well. No hesitation needed. It's one of those bikes which feels like it will go fast as you want it to go. Again, going around the corners, sweeping bends, glides in beautifully. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. You could have a lot of fun on this bike definitely got an excitement factor to it now. So if you're somebody who likes to ride fast or slow, in both situations you'll, you'll love this bike. It's amazing isn't it how Roy Wenfield have, have literally, you know, since about 2016, they've changed the landscape of the whole industry. You know, people who would never um, consider getting a slow bike or something like a 411 it's changed people's way and thinking of uh, you know about biking and this Himalayan although the 411 wasn't for me I didn't really like it to well not a case of not liking it just just wasn't for me let's put it that way whereas this it's got Exeter Rider written all over it love it question is would it be this bike or the Meteor that's what I'm going to struggle with. Oh, another thing I haven't mentioned yet is that this is 450cc, so it's not in the top level of tax road fund license. I think it's about £85 if I remember correctly now. It's gone up again. No surprise there, is there, eh? So to actually run the bike would be pretty cheap. It's a shame it's got the 3,000 service intervals, um, but I don't know, it's what it is, isn't it? It's a beautiful machine. As I say, it's feisty as well. It's fun to, to get a bit of a lick on with it, you know? Okay, from here, look. Second gear. Versus 60. God, it's so feisty. Sixth gear, 70 miles an hour. Now, question is, what would it be like on a long journey? Well, I can't tell you, can I? You know, it's going to change this bike over the next sort of thousand miles dramatically. My gut feeling is, is that it will. Um, flatten out quite a lot. That, that's the way it, it feels to me at the moment. I certainly feel very comfortable. A dinky little screen which is doing next to nothing and it's just moving the wind around my chest. 
which is uh, what you'd expect from a screen that size, wouldn't you? But it's certainly not, you know, I certainly feel like I could sit on here for quite a while. The only thing that I've noticed that I'm kind of a bit iffy on, the seat. The seat I do have to jiggle around a bit on to, to get comfortable, move back and forward, etc. So maybe that might be a problem over time. Maybe I'd have to send it off to be done. What will the vibes be like after 2,000 miles? Don't know, but all I can tell you is that I am getting a surprising amount through the bars. And I'm certainly getting a lot through the um, pegs as well at the moment. But certainly power-wise, uh, even with a pillion, you wouldn't have any issue with this bike going on the motorway on a long trip. Well then guys, so what we're going to do now, we're just going to do some slow speed uh, turns and, uh, you know, just see what it's like to ride slowly. Uh, has it got the chuggability of the 411? Probably not, but it's still surprising how well it does at slower speed. So let me just jump on. Now I'm not sure if you can see this here, but it's got a, uh, a lovely big side stand on the side here and uh, like so and it's really uh, quite tractable like so it misses the foot peg no problem and uh, the only thing I would say is that it does feel like it's leaning a long way when I'm tipping it over I don't think that's me either sometimes you lean it so far you kind of want it to be about there maximum I guess but you've got a lot more it does feel like it goes a long way but it's just something you get used to isn't it right so first of all what i want to show you is just what it's like stood up on the pegs with me okay and uh i'm finding it quite good although the tank does feel quite narrow to clamp on with my knees here not sure if you can see that too well but yeah it does feel quite narrow but you can kind of grab a hold of it and get a good purchase of the in between your legs there which says you know goes for something doesn't it um slow speed sat down so so easy it really is so so easy it's uh turns quite i wouldn't say it's really a, a, a tight turner but it still turns pretty tight no drag of the back brake there and again I can just kind of you know when you tip it in tip the bike down I don't feel like it's going to fall away from me oh <laughs> he says <laughs> I'll leave that in on the gravity surface that never helps does it especially when it's not your bike uh, but yes yeah, so the slow speed is is fantastic it really is really slow really nice and really easy so um, no problem there clutch control Again, it's, it's really easy as well, really light, and uh, yeah, it takes off just lovely. Uh, we do have switchable ABS on this as well, which is a major bonus when you're doing off-roads or, or going on the lanes. Most importantly, it just holds itself up really well going, you know, at slow speed. I'm not trying hard at all, you know, I'm not trying to do this at all, it just tends to hold itself upright. Really good going that, really, really good going. So there you go, that is my review of the 2024 Royal Enfield Himalayan. Thanks very much for watching, please give it a thumbs up uh, as soon as you can, it's always really helpful to me. Um, overriding thoughts, uh, I, I think that they've just absolutely smashed, smashed it, they really have. Uh, I hate using words like that but they really have done so well on this bike um i think it's going to sell really well I, I can see it selling as well as the 411 did for for uh, royal anfield uh bits that i don't like about it is probably just the seat i'm finding that is quite hard i haven't watched any other reviews um apart from quinn peak spiker he done one um which was a good one he went into it quite a lot as well so I'll leave a little card up here for his video on and his review of it. The actual Sherpa engine, 
fantastic. I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change the gearing. I wouldn't change the way that it's set up. The fueling's really nice. The fly-by-wire is, uh, is plush, really, really plush. Reliability factor in this, we'll see over time. Obviously, with it being a new engine, there might be teething problems, but the, this bike has had so much press anyway and been well tested that it's, it's kind of unlikely uh, that they're going to get any big problems. The only problems that you might get are, uh, you know, teething problems and maybe maybe a recall, you know, worst case. But uh, it's been very well tested, and that's what I like about this. It's been very well tested before they started letting these bikes go out the showroom. So uh, that can only be a good thing for the consumer. So if you're thinking about buying a Himalayan, um, uh, it's too strong for me to say I would recommend one because I haven't had it long enough. But I don't really see why you wouldn't want one, you know? Um, I mean, some people just like to stick to certain brands. I think this will move people into the Royal Enfield brand. I wasn't sure what to expect with this engine, but they, they've still got it. They've still got that uh, Royal Enfield uh, charm, but in a more lively, uh, faster sort of manner. So, and that's what I'm really pleased about. I didn't want them to lose that, that kind of, uh, that, that feel, you know, that, that chuggability feel. It's, it's different, but they still got it. So yeah, really pleased about that. I want to talk to you about some of the extras that you can get for the 450 Himalayan. And let's start with crash protection. So here we have crash bars, a belly pan, a headlight grill, and a radiator guard, touring mirrors and handlebar pads. An adventure screen, which I would imagine will sell pretty well. A very important rider and pillion comfort seats. Uh, I'd be very interested in knowing how much of a difference that would make to the seat comfort. And of course, what is an adventure without having some decent side panniers? Uh, now these panniers are lockable and strong and also they are waterproof. 40 litre top boxes are also available in silver and black. Let's not forget that you need the pannier rails as well the mountain plate for the top boxes and also you can buy some waterproof bags so i'm going to leave it there thanks to cms motorcycles in exeter for lending me the bike for the day um, so pleased that i went out on it today i've really enjoyed riding it uh, please get yourself to the shop which is in pinho in exeter uh, and speak to chris derek or jane and they will uh, sort you out a test ride on this very bike and uh, yeah, apart from that, like the video, subscribe if you if you haven't already. Uh, thanks ever so much for watching and getting this far in the video. Absolutely brilliant. What a beautiful, lively little engine this is.